back to building Ghana's future, a place where we build homes for Africa and her children. Today we're going to be talking about some quick ways you can save money while building your home in Ghana. Okay, first things first, um, before you start constructing your home, a developer or uh, whoever's in charge of your building will give you a BOQ, which is the um, bill of quantities. One quick way that you can save money on that is to have it verified. Okay, um, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to um, other people that have knowledge in this field um, to, you know, pay them uh, a fee and have them be your second eye just to verify and make sure that you're not being um, taken for granted when it comes to uh, the cost of materials and labor and all that stuff. All right, especially when you're going to be um, paying people up front to do all of the purchasing for you. Um, you want to make sure that, you know, the coat that they're giving you is actually the price of the materials. Okay. Um, one, it could be that, you know, they're, they're giving it to you at a very lower price. So they will be calling you from time to time um, to, you know, ask for more money. Um, but the best and most common way that people get jip is, you know, um, the prices being boosted up um, and, you know, the profit or whatever change is left, you're never going to see that. So uh, one quick way to save money is to make sure that you get that verified. Okay. All right. Two, um, you can buy your own materials. All right. Uh, it's, it's the same, you know, similar to uh, number one, but in this case, you have to be in the location where wherever that home is being built. Um, if it's in Ghana, you want to be in Ghana, right, um, to be able to purchase those materials. So if you can uh, purchase those materials after you receive the BOQ, okay? All right. So three, um, always make sure you bargain, you know, whether it's at the construction store, whether it's with the laborers, whether is with a developer um, bargain, all right? I know we are not used to that in the West. Um, price is usually fixed in a lot of ways. So, you know, whatever price you see, you pay for. But um, in this case, usually in, um, you know, in African countries, you can bargain your way through anything, all right? So if you have good bargaining skills, just bargain. And uh, if there is room, um, you know, in the cost or the expenditure, they will always give you um, some sort of discount. Okay. All right. Labors. So one thing I have encountered is that, you know, you can pay a developer um, to build your home for you. You can, um, you know, pay them up front, give them the money to build your home for you. But usually that comes at an, uh, a very expensive cost okay it um, the difference I see is that okay so the developer would be the one to go on uh, go around and find you the labor it's very convenient right you don't have to go around looking for anybody or research anyone they've already done that work for you so they bring the people to the site the work gets done all right and this um, the to, to save money if you have to go and look for people it will take time you would, uh, and that's the catch over there. You have to, you know, ask around, get recommendations and whatnot to get, you know, those people to come do the work. But if you are able to do that, I guarantee you, you're going to save a whole lot of money. All right. I'll give an example. Um, I needed a uh, steel bender to put together um, some, you know, iron rods and stuff on my site for me. The price that he quoted and uh, quite high. You know, I, I couldn't understand why he wanted that much money. So I had to look into it for myself. Um, I went and found the laborers myself. The price is one fourth. Um, after the work is done, the price is going to be one fourth of what the uh, developer um, wanted for me. So that's a quick way, you know, uh, if you ever forget, just remember this story and it might be able to save you a lot of money during your construction. Okay. The other um, downside to doing that too is 
obviously we all want to trust in the developer okay because we feel like they are the professionals and they know what they're doing okay uh, so when you go in this approach of finding people on your own um, it would be good for you to know what is supposed to be done or at least have somebody with a good knowledge of you know what the labels are supposed to do they all they will come in and they'll know what they're doing you still want to have that extra set of eyes to make sure that the work is done right okay um, trying to save money here and there that's going to cost you in the long run when the building is not in the um, quality uh, it's not done to quality spec that you would want it to be at it's pretty much losing because you're going to have to fix it down the road okay so just make sure you're wise about it on how you approach it if you want to go for the labors yourself Educate yourself first before you know you go that approach so that you know exactly what's coming. All right Okay um, And another way too that you can uh, Save money on your building is uh, You can cut your own blocks. All right. I did that. Um, I know there's a lot of savings but uh, the catch to that is obviously you have to buy the materials needed to um, produce your own blocks for you all right so there's an expense to that and you have to you know be prepared so at the end of the day um, advantage is for me obviously I had the vast amount of land all right that I was using so I can always cut more blocks and sell it to other people to try to make up money uh, where I lost um, and you know that's beneficial to me but if you have a very tiny plot um, that you cut the blocks on and when it's ready to build that means all the materials you use uh, the equipment you use to build the blocks has to go because now your home is ready to be built all right so you can always sell that as a second hand to somebody else that might need it um, but if you don't you know obviously comparing all right to give you a, a price analysis of what it costs to cut blocks on your own and to purchase all right when you cut it on your own um, let's say uh, a six inch block might be between four to five cities um, per block all right and then a five inch three to four cities per block but when you're buying from somebody else you're paying um, for either of them you're paying between six to seven cities per block so you know you think about it if it's worth it to you to go through the troubles of cutting your own blocks then by all means go for it but uh, I can tell you that at the end of the day um, it, it, at the end of the day depending on how big your um, building is you will see a vast uh, I'm talking about thousands of cities in difference you know and between cutting your own blocks and um, purchasing from somebody else okay so another way too that you can try to save um, money during your construction is uh, use your own truck transportation all right uh, I can't tell you how many times we've purchased materials that if I had um, you know rented a truck to bring it to my site the amount of money it would have costed me but I have my own truck um, so I use that and it's been very beneficial so in this case if you're going into um, you know that type of construction you're building your own home and you have the funds to buy your own truck you can go ahead and do that make that purchase and when you're done constructing you can always sell it to somebody else you know so that's another way too to try to save money um, last one that I have would be water okay if you have the means to drill a borehole um, here in Ghana you know everybody drills bowl well not everyone but the people that can afford it um, drill boreholes on their land uh, to get their own backup water right if you don't have the city water coming to you then you know that's your main source of water but if you have the city water coming to you you can have it as a backup in case you know there's no water flowing um, it happens here in Ghana and I'm sure it's all over Africa back in the uh, United States the water is always flowing so we never really experience or have the need to even think about 
uh, borehole. Most people probably don't even know what a borehole is. <laughs> but here in Ghana, it's common. Everybody knows of what a borehole is. So if you have one of those um, and you're constructing, it's a lifesaver because water is not cheap. You know, uh, purchasing water, I think they were charging me um, 70 CDs um, for, I think, 300 liters of water or so. Um, so it's it, it can be very expensive, you know, when you, you have a big home going up, especially when you start casting um, concrete and stuff like that. It takes up a lot of water, a lot of water. So you're constantly going to be buying water every day. Um, and so having your own water will save you a lot of money that way. All right. And when you're done, it's yours. You can always use it for whatever, washing your cars, doing, you know, garden, whatever it is you want to use it for. Um, you can use it that way. So that's pretty much it. And I hope you all find it um, uh, useful information. Um, all of these examples that I've given you, you know, if you want to know more about it or um, see if there are some ways that I can help you um, with your own building and stuff like that, um, you know, we have many services. We can review the BOQ. Uh, we can help you in purchasing land. Um, we can help you in purchasing a home. Um, you know, whatever it is that you can think of as far as construction um is uh, as far as construction in Ghana, um, you can reach out to me. I don't charge for consultation; uh, it's free. You know, you can donate, but I won't charge you anything um, for it. And um, you know, you can ask for services, and those we have a fee for, but you know, it's affordable. And um, yeah, so thank you all for being with me today, and uh, have a blessed day.